it's been a little bit since we last talked about Linux Mint. I think the last Mint video was Cinnamon just getting the absolute basic Wayland support ready. But the April 2024 entry of the monthly news sent a small part of the Linux world into a frenzy. The first part of the post isn't too important. It's about their network infrastructure, CDN stuff, data aggregation, who's downloading the different versions and things like that, along with swapping over to Matrix to do their project communication. But the part that got people a bit um, angry and heated was this part starting here. XAP should be independent. Now, XAP is something you probably haven't heard of unless you really care about what happens in the Linux Mint ecosystem. So, XApps is a project started back in 2016 to produce generic applications for traditional GTK desktop environments. Basically, a GTK environment that isn't trying to be GNOME. So, things like Cinnamon, Budgie, XSCE, and things of that nature. The idea behind this project is to replace applications which no longer integrate properly outside of a particular environment. This is the case for a growing number of GNOME applications, and not just GNOME applications developed by the GNOME team, GNOME adjacent applications in things like the GNOME Circle, and to give our desktop environments the same set of core applications so that each change, each new feature being developed, each little improvement made in one of them will benefit not just one environment, but all of them. Because there's no reason for Cinnamon, Budgie, XSC, and everything else to have their own text editor, for example. If you can make one generic GTK text editor that all of the regular desktops using GTK can integrate, that saves a lot of time and a lot of effort. The idea behind the project is to replace applications which no longer integrate properly outside of a particular environment. This is the case for a growing number of GNOME applications. And not just GNOME applications that are directly a part of GNOME. The GNOME adjacent applications in things like GNOME Circle, or at least aiming to be something that fits directly into GNOME, and to give our desktop environments the same set of core applications so that each change, each new feature being developed, each little improvement made in one of them will benefit not just one environment, but all of them. It makes no sense to develop three different text editors, five different calculators, and so on. When we work on projects like these, we want to make it count. An improvement in the text editor shouldn't benefit only one addition, it should benefit all of them. Especially with something like a calculator. You're all trying to achieve the exact same goal and they're gonna look pretty much the same in the end anyway. So if you can make something that is generic, that can be themed the way the individual desktops want it to be themed, that is a much better goal to have. The goal of the XAPs is not to reinvent the wheel, quite the opposite in fact. It's to guarantee the maintenance of applications we already enjoyed and to steer the development in a direction that benefits multiple desktop environments. At a time where GNOME applications are less and less designed to work anywhere else than in GNOME, a project like XAP is extremely important. Maybe not not function, but they do look extremely out of place. If you see a modern GNOME application, you can tell instantly that application was made for GNOME. You are never going to make that look like it belongs anywhere else. It's going to have extreme use of client-side decorations. It's going to make use of hamburger menus instead of menu bars and other little things that no matter what you do to it are always going to look wrong. But was it a success outside of Mint though? Yes and no. Many X apps are available in other distributions. Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, etc. But very few distributions actually make use of them. Take Zubuntu for instance. It used to ship with File Roller, GNOME Calculator, Evans. These applications moved to Libid Waiter and now look completely out of place in XSCE, so Zubuntu replaced them with Ngrampa, Mate Calculator, Atril, for GNOME Scan, it couldn't find alternatives though. This is GNOME Scan and a trill side by side in Ubuntu 24.04. You can tell basically instantly that one of these is a modern GNOME app. That is not to say the modern GNOME app looks bad. I think GNOME Scan looks 
way, way better than whatever this weird theme that Zubuntu has going on here, and Clem admits the exact same thing. In reply to someone named Sam, I agree with you, and I'll say this. I think Libid Waiter, the hard-coded theme used by Gnome Scan, is much better looking than Greybird, the theme used by the system and a trill here in the picture, but the problem isn't which theme looks better. Ultimately, that's subjective and Zubuntu's cosmetic decision. The problem is they look completely different. Here on this picture, you can only see the theme and the window controls, but there's also a huge difference in layouts, UI, dialogues, button placement, etc. This isn't ideal for Zubuntu. These applications are installed by default, and this is how it looks out of the box. If I didn't know any better, if I didn't know about GTK versions or Libad Waiter or anything else like that, I would just assume that there's something broken here and I need to do something to fix my theme. Before I go on with this, I want to say this isn't criticism directed at Zubuntu. As an official Ubuntu derivative, they cannot ship with a previous version of GNOME Scan, and I think it's partially our fault they got in this situation. Now why is it partially our fault? Because we never knocked on XFC's door and or work with them. They have the same problems as us, as Mate, as Budgie, as many other desktops. We made X apps because we needed them in Mint, in Cinnamon. We didn't want to make Cinnamon apps. We made Linux apps which worked everywhere and wrote it somewhere and we left it at that. It was enough for us, but it wasn't enough for Zubuntu or other desktops. From their point of view, they saw Linux Mint making something in their own little corner and putting it on github.com slash Linux Mint, or even worse, they saw nothing at all. What should have happened ideally would have been more communication and an independent XAP project, not hosted or maintained by Linux Mint, but by people from various desktop and or distributions. XAP should be its own organization with its own GitHub repositories, chat room, website, etc. It should be a space which facilitates collaboration, compatibility, and the development of applications which work everywhere and not just apps which are needed or maintained by us. This is very similar to the way that things like Wayland are done, for example. Wayland is on the free desktop GitLab. It's not on the GNOME GitLab using the GNOME mailing list with the GNOME website and the GNOME forums. It's on its own separate thing. And whilst GNOME is very heavily involved, they are not the only ones involved in that project. You also have KDE, you have WROOTS, you have COSMIC, and all of these other things. And it makes more sense for it to be a collaborative project if it's in its own separate organization. Even if it was started by one particular desktop, having that separation makes it very clear that this is something different from just us. Now down the bottom here, you can see the next title which indicates the direction we are going. Lib ad waiter is for GNOME only. I will slightly argue that maybe other desktops that are trying to look like GNOME also make sense to use Libid Waiter. But things like Mate, things like Cinnamon, things like XFC and Budgie definitely do not fit with what Libid Waiter is right now. No matter what happens upstream, we'll always do our best to make each Linux Mint release a better experience than the one you already have. Applications will be native and look native. There are a lot of GNOME developers, especially the ones in support of things like Stop Theming My Apps, that will argue that native looking apps are even a thing. How does an app look native? It's always going to look out of place. Just ignoring that whole history of Linux we had where they did look native. <laughs> like, that's a thing that people know exists. You can't just gaslight people into thinking that never happened, and they will integrate well. If we let you choose a desktop theme, all installed applications will support it. There are issues when it comes to the Electron applications, but that's a whole separate issue outside of just the GTK issues. It would be completely unacceptable for us to ship with an application which used its own window controls and didn't follow the system theme. Looking at it long term, we also do not want our apps to be designed by people who have no consideration for what is important to us, and whose decisions are motivated by a desktop we don't even use. We could do like Ubuntu 24.04, 
They provide a finished product with a high level of integration. The way they do that is by modifying Libid Waiter to support their theme, Yaro. We could do the same with Minty. It would make all GNOME applications look nice in Mint, but we'd have to remove theme selection since it would only work with Minty. In the long term, it wouldn't solve the main issue either. These applications are designed for a desktop which is more and more different to ours by the day. It's not just a question of themes or look. Today, these apps are losing menu bars, themes. Tomorrow, they might come with no minimize button or anything GNOME doesn't use. Obviously, that is hyperbole, but when you have an application designed specifically with one desktop in mind, it's going to be designed for what that desktop wants. And if there is some better solution to minimize buttons that GNOME came up with, that's what would happen regardless of what any other desktop might be doing. Now, to be clear, that is totally okay. If GNOME wants to do their own thing, they are totally free to do that. In the same vein, if Mint doesn't like what GNOME is doing, they can also do their own thing as well. If they want to make these generic GTK applications that fit much better in with the more traditional Linux desktop environments like Mate, Cinnamon, Budgie, XSCE, they are totally free to do that as well. And here is the part that got people a little riled up. We didn't want to fork a whole suite of apps right now, not with the upcoming major release, and not before we try to make XApp more independent and boost collaboration with other projects. In Mint 22, GNOME Font Viewer was removed, and the following applications were downgraded back to GTK3 versions. All of these applications here going from their GTK4 variant back to an older version. These applications are very likely to be forked in the near future, except for Xenity, which will probably stop using altogether. Now, some people have scoffed at the idea of reverting back to an old version of application, reverting back from the GTK4 version to the GTK3 version. But this is not the first time in general computing history, or even just in Linux history, where people have reverted back to an old version forked off of that point and then took the project in a whole new direction. You may personally not dislike the direction of GNOME, you may even like the direction of modern GNOME, but I can't find any reason to criticize a developer who says, okay, I don't like the direction of Upstream. I could sit here and just whine about Upstream and not try to get anything done. But instead of doing that, they say, okay, I don't like the state of the project today. I'm going to go back to the state where I did like it, and I'm going to maintain it myself from there. I have nothing but respect for a developer who does that. They could absolutely be wasting their time. There could be no way to upgrade these applications with GTK3 and bring them up to a much, much better state than they were in before. That is entirely possible, but I cannot fault the developer who wants to try to do so. I knew that forks did exist because there's forks of every project, but I was not aware that they were already using a fork of GTK3, but not by them. We're talking with as many people as possible right now, including XSE, of course, but also GNOME developers. I don't think our priority should be to focus on picking a global solution for everybody. We want to start by creating a space where everybody can talk and are able to start smaller collaboration projects. Personally, I think the solutions will be varied. We'll want to support forks, but also improve Qt integration. Talk with GNOME about potential GTK4 non-GNOME libs. Good luck with that, etc whatever helps making compatible software available widely. Lib and Wader is for GNOME and GNOME only. We can't blame GNOME for this. They've been very clear about it from the start. It was made specifically for GNOME to have more freedom and build its own ecosystem without impacting GTK. We want to send a strong signal upstream and towards other projects. We cannot and will not support applications which do not support our users and environments. We can't promote applications to our users which don't support our users. The software manager will be vigilant towards that going forward and list compatible software by default. I want to reach out to upstream developers here. If your application is only for GNOME, then by all means, ignore this and use Livid Waiter. It's made for that. 
if you don't intend to support all environments, then don't use this library. At the very least, please get in touch with us so we're aware of your intention and keep you listed as a supported app. Then there's the whole issue of Edwida breaking outside of GNOME. This is a very in-depth topic and there's a lot more here than I could talk about in this one video. This has to do with GNOME ignoring open standards and doing things their own special way. And as you can see, there is a lot of discussion to be had here and it's still ongoing. So I'll save that for another time. The point being, GNOME will be GNOME. If Mint was happy to compromise now, they could very easily move to GTK4, but I don't think we'll move to GTK4 until it's clear we have a future with GTK. This is what is being discussed, for instance, right now for GTK5. Consider removing the GTK theme name setting and consider dropping the X11 backend. At this stage, both of these discussions are kind of stalled. They do have GTK5 labels on them, but neither is absolutely confirmed. We won't invest in a toolkit which drops support for themes and or X11. Not until themes and X11 are already dead. This is never gonna happen. This one, it's got a timer ticking down so it'll happen eventually, which is not the case right now. Mint 22 will be the current platform until 2026. All of its DEs support X11 and themes. It's hard to predict where we'll be in 5 to 10 years, but right now we're very happy with GTK3. Wherever we move next, I would like to think it will be very similar to it, or very compatible in terms of what it offers. GTK3 itself will last a very long time. Some people might compliment GTK with libs or fork it if it becomes useless, or they might join the GTK project and help them support what GNOME doesn't want to work on. Who knows? And I think he is absolutely right about this. It's only in the past couple of years that GTK2 minus GIMP has been completely dropped from most distros. There was a long, long migration period well into the life cycle of GTK4. And the same is going to be true for GTK3 moving to GTK5. But I have a feeling that with the direction that GTK4 and Libid Waiter is gone, there might be a stronger push to keep GTK3 alive. The only thing that is for sure is that the things we need, we need. When solutions disappear, the needs don't vanish. We find alternatives. Right now many people need things which are no longer provided or being discussed and removed. It's hard to predict who will do what, who will follow, and what will happen. But it's definitely the right time to start talking about it and getting people to understand each other a little bit more. Now, maybe you completely disagree with what Mint is doing here, and that's totally okay. But I am very happy that a project that doesn't like the way GNOME is acting as an upstream is actually doing something about it and not just sitting there complaining about the way that Upstream operates. I feel the exact same way about Cosmic. They've had a lot of issues with GNOME as an Upstream. So they just went and made their own desktop and no longer have to deal with that problem. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you use Mint? Do you use some of these applications? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrabs, Libera Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... I'm not a big fan of Mint. Not like the distro, but Mint itself. Yeah.